Loki had told another tale about Thor, about Thor and Teramut, a stupid giant who had cunning streaks in him. Loki and Thor had been in this giant's house. He had made a feast for them, and Thor had been unwatchful. Then, when they were far from Jotunheim, Thor missed Mjolnir, missed the hammer that was the defense of Asgard and the help of the gods. He could not remember how or where he had mislaid it. Loki's thoughts went toward Terum, that stupid giant who had yet cunning streaks in him. Thor, who had lost the hammer that he had sworn never to let out of his sight, did not know what to do. But Loki thought it would be worthwhile to see if Terum knew anything about it. He went first to Asgard. He hurried across the Rainbow Bridge and passed Heimdall without speaking to him. To none of the dwellers in Asgard whom he had met, he dared relate the tidings of Thor's loss. He spoke to none until he came to Frigga's palace. To Frigga, he said, You must let me your falcon dress until I fly to Term's dwelling and find out if he knows where Molni is. If every feather was silver, I would give it to you to go on such an errand, Frigga said. So Loki put on the falcon dress and flew to Jotunheim and came near Term's dwelling. He found the giant upon the hillside putting golden and silver collars upon the necks of his hounds. Loki, in the plumage of a falcon, perched on the rock above him, watching the giant with falcon eyes, and while he was there, he heard the giant speak beautiful, boastful words. I put colors of silver and gold on you now, my hounds, said he, but soon we giants will have the gold of Asgard to deck our hounds and our steeds, yeah, even the necklace of Freya to put upon you, the best of my hounds, for Molnir, the defense of Asgard, is in terms holding. Then Loki spoke to him. Yeah, we know that Molnir is in thy possession, O Terum, said he, but know thou the eyes of the watchful gods are upon thee. Ha, Loki, shape-changer, said Terum. You are there, but all your watching will not help you to find Molnir. I have buried Thor's hammer eight miles deep in the earth. Find it if you can. It is below the caves of the dwarves. It is useless for us to search for Thor's hammer, said Loki. It, him, is useless for you to search for it, said the giant. But what a recompense you would gain if you restored Thor's hammer to the dwellers in Asgard, said Loki. No, cunning Loki, I will never restore it, not for any recompense, said Terum. Yet bethink thee, Terum, said Loki, is there not in Asgard you would like to own? No treasure, no possession? Odin's ring or Frey's ship, Skildabur? No, no. Only one thing called the dwellers in Asgard out for me that I would take in exchange for Mjolnir Thor's hammer, said Terum. And what would that be, Term? said Loki, flying towards him. She whom many giants have striven to gain. Freya for my wife, said Term. Loki watched Term for long with his falcon eyes. He saw that the giant would not alter his demand. I'll tell the dwellers in Asgard of your demand, he said at last, and he flew away. Loki knew that the dwellers in Asgard would never let Freya be taken from them to become the wife of Terum, the stupidest of the giants. He flew back. By this time, all the dwellers in Asgard had heard of the loss of Molnir, the help of the gods. Heimdall shouted to him as he crossed the Rainbow Bridge to ask what tidings he brought back, but Loki did not stop to speak to the warden of the bridge, but went straight to the hall where the gods sat in council. To the Aesir and the Vanir, he told Terum's demand. None would agree to the beautiful Freya to live in Jotunheim as a wife to the stupidest of the giants. All in the council were cast down. The gods would never again be able to help mortal men, for now that Molnir was in the giants' hands, all their strength would have to be used in the defense of Asgard. So they sat in the council with looks downcast, but cunning Loki said, I thought of a trick that may win back the hammer from stupid Terum. Let's pretend to send Freya to Jotunheim as a bride for him, but
but let one of the gods go in Freya's veil and dress. Which of the gods would bring himself to do a shameful thing? said those in the council. Oh, he who lost the hammer, Thor, should be prepared to do as much to win it back, said Loki. Thor? Thor! Let Thor win back the hammer from Terran by Loki's trick, said the Aesir and Venner. They left it to Loki to arrange how Thor should go to Jotunheim as a bride for Terran. Loki left the council of the gods and came to where he had left Thor. There is but one way to win the hammer back, Thor, he said, and the gods and council have decreed that you shall take it. What is the way? said Thor. But no matter what it is, tell me of it, and I shall do as thou dost say. Then... I'm to take you to Jotunheim as a bride for Terum. Thou art go in bridal dress and veil in Freya's veil and bridal dress. <laughs> Said laughing Loki. What? I am to dress in woman's garb? Shouted Thor. Yeah, Thor, and wear a veil over you and a garland of flowers upon it. Loki said, I wear a garland of flowers and rings upon thy fingers and a bunch of housekeeper keys in thy girdle, said Loki. Cease thy mockery, Loki, said Thor roughly, or I shall shake thee. It is no mockery. Thou wilt have to do this to win Molnir back for the defense of Asgard. Terum will take no other recompense than Freya. I would mock him by bringing thee to him in Freya's veil and dress. When thou art in his hall and he asks thee to join hands with him, say thou will not until he puts Molnir into thy hands. Then, when thy mighty hammer is in thy holding, thou can deal with him and with all in his hall. And I shall be with thee as thy bridesmaid. O oh, sweet maiden Thor. Loki, thou didst devise all this to mock me. In a bridal dress, I with a bride's veil upon me. The dwellers in Asgard will never cease to laugh at me, said Thor. Yeah, but there'll never be laughter again in Asgard unless there able to bring back the hammer with thine unwatchableness lost, said Loki. True, said Thor unhappily, and is this, thinkest thou, Loki, the only way to wing back Mjolnir from Terum? It's the only way, O Thor, said Loki. So Thor and Loki set out for Jotunheim and the dwelling of Terum. A messenger had gone before them to tell Terum that Freya was coming with her bridesmaid, that the wedding feast was to be prepared and the guests gathered, and that Mjolnir was to be at hand, so that it might be given over to the dwellers in Asgard. Terum and his giant mother hastened to have everything in readiness. Thor and Loki came to the giant's house in the dress of a bride and bridesmaid. A veil was over Thor's head, hiding his beard in his fierce eyes. A red embroidered robe he wore, and at his side hung a girdle of housekeeper's keys. Loki was veiled, too. The hall of Terum's great house was swept and garnished, and great tables were laid for the feast, and Terum's mother was going from one guest to another, vaunting that her son was getting one of the beauteous dwellers in Asgard for his bride, Freya, whom so many of the giants had tried to win. When Thor and Loki stepped across the threshold, Terum went to welcome them. He wanted to raise the veil of his bride and give her a kiss. Loki quickly laid his hand on the giant's shoulder. Oh, bear, he whispered, do not raise her veil. We dwellers in Asgard are reserved and bashful. Freya would be much offended to be kissed before this company. 
Aye, aye, said Tim's old mother. Do not rise thy heads, pale son. These dwellers in Asgard are more refined in their ways than we, the giants. Then the old woman took Thor by the hand and led him to the table. The size and the girth of the bride did not surprise the huge giants who were in the wedding company. They stared at Thor and Loki, but they could see nothing of their faces and little of their forms because of their veils. Thor sat at the table with Term on one end of him and Loki on the other. Then the feast began. Thor, not noticing that what he did was unbecoming to a refined maiden, ate, ate salmon right away. Loki nudged him and pressed his foot, but he did not heed Loki. After the salmon, he ate a whole ox. These maids of Asgard, said the giants to each other, they may be refined as Terem's mother says, but their habitats are lusty enough. No wonder she eats, poor thing, said Loki to Terem. It is eight days since we left Asgard, and Freya never ate upon the way, so anxious was she to see Terem and to come to his house. Poor oh, darling, poor oh, darling, said the giant. What has she eaten is little after all. Thor nodded his head toward the mead vat. Terem ordered his servants to bring a measure to his bride. The servants were kept coming f with measures to Thor. While the giants watched, and while Loki nudged and nodded, he drank three barrels of mead. Oh, said the giants to Terem's mother, we are not so sorry that we failed to win a bride from Asgard. And now a piece of the veil slipped aside, and Thor's eyes were seen for an instant. Oh, how come does it that Freya has such glaring eyes? said Terem. Oh, poor thing, poor thing, said Loki. No wonder her eyes are glaring and staring. She has not slept for eight nights. Uh, so anxious was she to come to you and to your house, Terem, but now the time has come for you to join hands with your bride. First put into her hands the hammer, well, near that she may know the great recompense that the giants have given for her coming. Then Term, the stupid as the giants, rose up and brought Milnir, the defense of Asgard, into the feasting hall. Thor could hardly restrain himself from springing up and seizing it from the giant, but Loki was able to keep him still. Term brought over the hammer and put the handle into the hands of her, whom he thought was his bride. Thor's hands closed in on the hammer. Instantly he stood up. The veil fell off of him. His countenance and his blazing eyes were seen by all. He struck one blow on the wall of the house. Down it crashed. Then Thor went striding out of the ruin with Loki beside him. While within the giants bellowed as the roof and walls fell down on them. And so was Molnir, the defense of Asgard lost and won back.